the public. I am taking my life because a judge has decreed me guilty of a crime I did not commit. He has deliberately lied about the matter. At my age, confinement under the rigors of prison life will be equivalent to my death warrant. The judge must surely know this, and since he is evidently determined to not only totally suppress my work, but to place me where only death can release me. I consider myself justified in choosing for myself, as did Socrates, the manner of my death. I prefer to die comfortably and peacefully on my own little bed, in my own room, instead of a prison cot. I am making this statement to the public in the hope that the public may be led to put down this growing menace to the liberties of the people. Nine years I have been fighting, single-handed, alone against Comstockism. Time and time again I have been pushed to the wall, and I myself have been publicly stigmatized in the press. For months they tracked me, night and day, wherever I went, vainly hoping to learn something detrimental to my character. Each time that I have been arrested, I have escaped by compromise. But I resolved, when I came to New York, that if again attacked by Comstockism, I would stand my ground and fight it to the death. Perhaps it may be in my death more than in my life. The American people may be shocked into investigating the dreadful state of affairs. Wax fat and arrogant and trample upon the liberties of the people invading, in my own case, both my right to freedom of religion and freedom of the press. There is only one lawful excuse for the communities interfering with anyone's religions or publications in America, and that is, the invasion by means of that religion or publications are of the people's rights to life, liberty, or their pursuit of happiness. No proof of such injury wrought has been produced in my case. Testimony for the government against me rests entirely upon the mere say-so of this paid informer. I have looked into the hearts of hundreds of men and women during the nine years in which I have been engaged in sex reform work, and my soul burns within me when I see how husbands and wives are suffering, and how nearly all the suffering could be done away with. Dear fellow Americans, for nine long years I have faced social ostracism, poverty, and the dangers of persecution. For your sakes, I have struggled alone in the face of great odds. For your sakes, I have come at last to the place where I must lay down my life for you, either in prison or out of prison. Will you do something for me now? I beg of you, for your own sakes, for the future happiness of the young people who are dearest to you, protect my little book.